Good day. Welcome to another session of Hub Tutorials. Like I told you in my previous video, we are going to begin the final accounts of partnerships. And so straight away, we will move on to the components of financial statement for the partnership business. And so for the final accounts of partnership business, we are going to prepare the income statement to determine the profitability of the partnership. And then after we prepare the income statement, remember that the partnership business is different from the business of the sole trader. Because the partnership business is usually two or more people that has contributed their money to form the business. And so profit and losses will be shared according to the agreed profit and loss sharing ratio or profit or loss sharing ratio. And so what is going to happen is that all like that of the sole trader where the sole trader enjoys all the profits alone or bears all the losses alone. In this case, the profit is going to be shared among the partners according to an agreed ratio. And so after we ascertain the net profit from the income statement, we have to prepare another account called the profit and loss appropriation account. So we are going to prepare the profit and loss appropriation account. The purpose of the profit and loss appropriation account is to share the profit. So what we are going to do is that after we have gotten the profit, this account is going to be used to share the profit among the partners. And before we share the profit, there are one or two things we may do in order to be able to arrive at the residual profit. And so we are going to go into that now. So after the profit and loss appropriation account, then we prepare the statement of financial position. But then before we prepare the statement of financial position, we may have to adjust the capital accounts or the current accounts. I'm going to explain that here later. But then we, are, we may have to prepare the capital account or the current accounts. So there could be, there could be adjustments of the capital accounts and or current accounts depending on the capital account system that they are maintaining. And then, after we adjust our capital and current accounts when necessary, we will now prepare the statement of financial position. So, these are the accounts that we are going to prepare for the final account of the partnership business. Now, Remember that the income statement has been dealt with already. You can refer to my previous video on the final account of a sole trader. The format is not different from what we are going to do in the case of a partnership. It says that there are some expenses that may be related to partnership alone, which I'm going to draw attention to in our next video. And then the statement of financial position has also been dealt with. So you can go back and refer to that from the final account of a sole trader because I treated. Now, the only difference between the statement of financial position of the partnership and that of the sole trader is where we are going to have the finance by, where we are going to record the finance by or the sources of finance items. We are going to change the style of presentation and it's going to be different from that of the sole trader. And so when we get there, I'll try and explain how it's going to be done. Okay, so. Apart from these two that we are already familiar with, uh, we are not too familiar with the profit and loss appropriation account and then the adjustment for capital and current accounts. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to help you to be able to prepare the profit and loss appropriation account with a format. And then I'm going to teach you how to do the adjustment of the capital accounts and if there is any current account, we are going to look at the difference and then we treat it accordingly. And so that is what we are going to do now. So, we are going to look at the format for the profit and loss appropriation account. But before that, I would like to explain the current account and the capital account concepts very clearly. Now, when we look at the capital accounts for the partnership, there are two main uh, broad classifications. We can look at two different types of capital accounts. We have the fixed capital account and then the fluctuating capital account. So 
a partnership business can decide to maintain either the fixed capital account or the fluctuating capital account. The fixed capital account means that there will be no changes to the initial capital that has been contributed by the partners in the capital account. And so, for example, you know, what we do, when we get to the finance buy column for the sole trader, when we get to the uh, statement of financial position for the sole trader and we get to the finance buy, what we do for the sole trader is that we usually write the capital and then we take out drawings. So any drawing that is made by the sole trader will reduce their net worth. Net worth. And then if there is any profit, we add the net profit to the capital. So we do this in the statement of financial position every year by reducing capital by drawings and then increasing the capital by profit. Of course, if there is a loss, we reduce the capital by the loss. And so what is going to happen is that every year, you will notice that the net worth or the capital of the sole trader will reduce or will change, will either increase or change. And so the sole trader in this case will never have a fixed capital because every year the balance on the capital account is changing due to that. Now, in the case of the partnership, this is no, the what I just did for the sole trader is what we call the fluctuating capital account type, where the capital will be fluctuating every year with the changes that is happening. Now, when we are maintaining a fixed capital account, a fixed capital account means that when the capital account balance is, let's say, 10,000, which is the initial capital that has been contributed by the owner or the partner, this 10,000 is not supposed to change. Normally, when they make drawings, it's supposed to be subtracted from the capital. But when we are maintaining a fixed capital account system, whether they make drawings or there is any profit to be added to the capital, this 10,000 will not change. So what we are going to do is that instead of adding profit and then taking out the drawings, we are not going to do that in this account because we want the capital account figure to remain fixed. That's why we call it a fixed capital account. And then because of this, we are going to open another account. And the other account will be called a current account. Now, what is the purpose of the current account? The current account is there to cater for these adjustments that are made on the capital. So that when there is profit that is supposed to be added to the capital, the profit will rather be written. You know that for the capital account, the credit side is supposed to be the side of increase. And the debit side is supposed to be the side of decrease. And so if profit is to be added, then it means we are adding it on the credit. And so you will see that profit will be added to the capital account, and if there are any drawings, sorry, the current account, and if there is any drawings made within the period, will also be debited to the current account. What are we doing? We are just doing the adjustment on capital, but in this case, we don't want the figure for the capital to be affected in effect. And so we will open a second account called the current account, which will cater for this movement that call changes in the capital account. And so what I'm trying to say is that Anytime a partnership business decides to operate a first capital account, there should be a current account in place as well. And the current account is going to take care of these drawings and profit adjustments on the capital. I hope you are getting me. Now, the second case is a fluctuating capital account. In the case of a fluctuating capital account, we don't care whether the capital account is changing or not. And so if the capital balance contributed is 10,000. We are going to still add our profits. If the profit, share of profit for the period is 1,000, we are going to add it up. And if the partner is making drawings of let's say 500, we debit that. And so in effect, you will see that the balance carried down at the end of the period will be 10,500. And that is going to be the balance for capital at the end of the year. Next year, if there are some things that will cause a change, it will come in into the same account. So what are we saying? The meaning of the fluctuating is that the capital account does not remain fixed. Every year it is changing. This year, last year it was 10,000. This year it's 10,005. Next year will be a different figure. It is always changing. It is fluctuating. That is the meaning of a fluctuating capital account. A fluctuating capital account do not need a current account in addition. 
So take note that any time you want to maintain a fixed capital account, you will definitely need the current account to support so that those adjustments that will not come into the capital, fixed capital account will be taken care of by the current account. In the same way, if the partnership business is operating a fluctuating capital account, then it means that those items which would have been taken care of by the current account will all come into the capital account and therefore there will be no need to open a current account. And so in the case of a partnership that is operating a current account or a fixed capital account system, there is going to be a balance carried down for the capital account itself and there is also going to be another balance for the current account itself. And so like I was explaining to you earlier, like I was explaining to you earlier, when we get to the finance buy portion of the statement of an official position for the partnership, we are not going to have capital minus drawings plus profits. If it is the case of a fixed capital account, we are going to have the balance brought by carry down for the capital account there, and then the current account balance is also going to be represented. And so if the partners are two, for example, when we get to the current account, we will look at partner A and partner B's balance, and then we put that there. And when we get to the current account also, we we'll look at the balance for partner A and partner B. And this is how the equity portion of the finance buy for the partnership business will look like in the statement of financial position. So we have a fluctuating capital account and we have a fixed capital account. Now most of the questions that we see require us to prepare the current account. It means that the fixed capital account looks widely used. However, you could get a question where you have a fluctuating capital account. Now take note that in the case of a fixed capital account, nothing is going into the capital account except it is an agreement of a capital withdrawal or a capital addition. So except when the owner or the partner is bringing in an additional capital or making a legally agreed withdrawal of capital by reducing their capital, nothing else will come into the fixed capital account. Any other adjustment that is adding up to the equity of the partner will be recorded in the current account. I believe I've made myself clear. And so we'll proceed from here to look at the format of the profit and loss appropriation account and then at the same time, we'll come back to look at the format of the current account. Okay. Okay, so we are going to prepare the profit and loss appropriation account. Now we are looking at the format. So we we'll say profit and loss appropriation account for the year ended. Then you bring the end of the year in which you are preparing the account. And so you indicate your currency signs. If it is dollars, you put your dollar sign there. You can put it there a third one there, depending on the kind of adjustment that you want to make. Now, in this case, we are assuming that there are two partners, partner A and B, for the sake of this format. Now, we are going to prepare this profit and loss appropriation account. Now, remember that I told you that for the partnership agreement, there are some elements that should be made in there. One of them, the first one is a profit and loss sharing ratio. It should be part of the partnership deed. And then you also indicate whether there are interest to be charged on drawings. And also, if there is any interest to be paid on capital. And if there is any partner that is active who needs to be paid a salary, partner's salary should also be stated. And then if there is any partner who has given out a loan, the loan that is given out by the partner should also, the amount of interest that the loan is attracting should also be there. Now, these are five basic things that you should have at your fingertips. Because that, that is what we are going to use for the preparation of the profit and loss appropriation account. Now, it is a very simple account. Now, after preparing your income statement, you have a net profit. And so you begin with your net profit from the income statement or loss. It could be a loss anyway. So your not net profit or loss should be stated first on the profit and loss appropriation account. Remember that I told you that this account is going to be used to share the profit for the two partners in this case. And so this is the pro net profit that was reported. Now, before we share the profit, there are some additions and subtractions that we are going to make. Now, listen very carefully. Now, we are going to share this profit for them. But before we share the profit, there could be an addition or subtraction. For example, 
if the provision of the partnership deed uh, specifies an interest to be paid on capital, then of course, this is where you are going to do the payment. So after you have your profit, if there is any interest to be paid on capital to the partners, then you pay this out. So interest to be paid on capital will be paid out of this profit to the partners. Now, if there is any interest to be charged on drawings, interest to be charged on drawings will be paid by the partners rather to the business. And so because they have made drawings and the business is charging them, remember that the business is a separate person from the owner or the owners according to the business entity concept. And so the business is charging drawings on the partners, interest on drawings. And so the interest will be paid by the partners to the business. And so what we are going to do is that the partners are paying back. So we add that interest on drawings that they are paying back to the partnership, uh, sorry, the partnership profit, and then we share it all for them. So if a partner does not make drawings, they don't pay any interest on drawings. And the same way, if the interest on capital is to be paid, we pay that out of profit, and then we share. Now, if any partner is to be paid a salary, this is where you pay the partner's salary. You will not do that in the income statement. You will not add the partner's salary to the normal wages and salaries that you pay your employees. And so, that is how we are going to do it. So, it's very simple. Your net profit, then you add your interest on drawings back. And then you pay out your interest on capital. And then you pay out any partner's salary. And so, that is what I'm going to do now. So, I will say add interest on drawings. You add your interest on drawings, now partner A, partner B. So if both of them have interest on drawings, you add the two and then you bring the final amount here and then you add it up to your profit. Now after adding your interest on drawings, then you take out your interest on capital. So we less interest on capital. So for the interest on capital to partner A and partner B, you will have them here. We are going to take out all this. Then after taking out your interest on capital, you also take out any partner's salary. So if any partner is taking salary or remuneration, usually it's just one or two, one partner. So if it's only partner A that is taking salary, you also bring that. And so the interest on capital plus your salary that you are paying out of the profit. You add them out and you subtract all that you are taking out from the profit. And so after subtracting that, you have a new figure. Now, this new figure is actually the profit that we are going to share. And so take note that the net profit that you reported from your income statement is not the profit that you are going to share. But rather, you have to make adjustments by adding your interest on drawings and taking out your interest on capitals. And then also, if there is any partner salary, you take that out as well. And when you have made this adjustment, whatever profit you have is actually the profit that you are going to share. And so I call that residual profit. So that is your residual profit. And so let me just put an underline. This is the profit that we are going to share, the residual profit. And so now that we have the residual profit, we are going to share this profit for the partners in their respective profit and loss sharing ratio. And so let us assume that the profit and loss sharing ratio for partner A and B is 3 is to 2. So what we are going to do is that we are going to say share of profits. And so for partner A, it's going to be 3 over 5 times the profit, which is AAA. Assuming it's AAA. And then for partner B, it's going to be 2 over 5 times the profit, the residual profit. And so we put those figures here. And then it will be equal to this residual profit. And so this is the procedure for sharing profit for the partners using the profit and loss appropriation account. Now take note that a partner may give out loan to the business to be used in the business. That money that the partner may have given to the business is not part of the, his capital or her capital. It is loan which will attract an interest. Now the interest on loan even though the money is supposed to be paid to the partner, it's not going to be paid out of the profit and loss appropriation account. It should be paid out 
from the income statement as a normal business expense because it is loans. It's a loan, sorry. Now, when you get a question where they have already given you the net profit and they make mention of the partner's interest on loan to be paid, what you have to do is that you first of all have to adjust the interest on the loan from the profit before you start your profit and loss appropriation account because interest on loan is supposed to be subtracted before we start appropriation. And so if there is any interest on partner's loan, that is here to be subtracted. You subtract that from the profit first before you start your profit and loss appropriation account. And so this is how the typical profit and loss appropriation account will look like for a partnership business. And finally, we are going to look at the format of the current account. So for the current account, in the case of a fixed capital account, Okay, so we prepare current accounts and it should be prepared in columnar form like this. So partner A, partner B, partner A, partner B. So this is the debit side of the current account and that's the credit side. And this is the middle line. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to prepare the current account. Now usually for a typical question that is a going concern business, we are going to have a balance brought forward. Now the normal balance for a current account is just like, just like the capital account, it has a credit balance. So you usually see the balance brought forward on the credit side. However, a partner can overdraw his or her account and so it is possible to see a debit balance for a current account. Don't make any mistake about that. If the current account balance is in bracket, it's a debit balance most of the time. So let us take note. So after we have brought our balance brought forward and then we put in our items. Now what we are going to do is that we said that this side will increase the equity of the partners and this side will reduce. And so from the profit and loss appropriation we just uh, prepared, we realized that in the profit and loss appropriation there were some interest on drawings and then there was some interest on capital. Now, this is what we are going to do. The interest on capitals, even though they were subtracted from their profits, they are going to be paid to the partners. And so the partners are going to gain. Now the interest on drawings, in the profit and loss appropriation was added to the profit, meaning that it was paid by the partners, and so it should reduce their balances. And so every item that is going to increase the balance of the partners will be credited, and every item that will decrease their balance will be debited. And so we are going to have interest on capitals. So the interest on capitals from the profit and loss appropriation will appear here again to increase the current account balance of the partners. And also, if there is any salary, partner salary, for any of the partners, let's say it's only partner A that is being paid salary, who credit partners A current account with a salary. And then let us not forget that there was share of profits as well. We shared the residual profit. And so the values that we have there for the share of profit will also come here. Each partner's share will increase their balance. And then there is one more thing that is not in the appropriation that will come here. If there is any loan, if any partner has given out loan to the business, the interest on that loan is coming to the partner. If any partner has given out loan to the business, the interest on the partner's loan, I told you that it will be reduced from the profit in the income statement. But the corresponding entry is that it's going to be credited to the current account of the partner that gave out the loan. So interest on partner's loan. Interest on loan, let's assume it was partner B that gave out the loan. We credit partner B, uh, capital and, uh, sorry, current account with the interest on the loan. And then we come to the items that will be found on the debit of the current account. Now, we have interest on drawings being the first one. Interest on drawings being the first one. And so that one will be transferred directly from the profit and loss appropriation account. And then there is one item that was not in the appropriation account, but will appear in the current account, and that is drawings. So, 
we are going to have interest on drawings here on the debit side, and at the same time, we are going to have drawings itself on the debit side of the current account. So these are the likely items. Of course, as we move forward to amalgamation and admission of a partner and the changes in partnership and all that, we are going to have share of goodwill and all that at green. But for now, this is what we are going to concentrate on. If there is any share of goodwill, it's a gain to the partners, and so that will be credited to the current account as well. And so having these items, you realize that apart from the drawings and the interest on loan, all these items are coming from the profit and loss appropriation account. And so always remember that drawings itself will appear in the current account to reduce the net worth of the partner. But then, interest on drawings will appear only in the uh, interest, sorry, but interest on drawings will appear here and then in the profit and loss appropriation account as well. So we balance off these current accounts using the same principle that we use to balance a two-column cash book. So we do each of, each of the partners. So balance carry now usually is on the debit side. But however, there could be a case where a balance carry down could appear on the debit side of the account for any of the partners. That is when you do more drawing than your benefit. And so if the balance carry down appears here, and we are going to have a balance brought down for the partner. And so ladies and gentlemen, this is how we prepare the current account. Now, the statement of financial position and the income statement has been dealt with, like I said earlier in our previous videos. Now, go back and look at it and study that very carefully. In our next video, which is the part two of this video, we are going to take a practical example and then try and solve a question involving the final account of partnership. But until then, I want you to share this video for others to have a benefit as well. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is when you are going to have the benefits of the channel. And then you have to make sure that you ring the notification bell as well. So that whenever I upload any new video, you have the notification on your devices. Thank you so much. Until we meet again for the part two, it's bye for now.